Hi boardies, welcome to Amass Games. Today I'm talking to you about Red Alert Space Fleet Warfare by Richard Borg. This is a game I got from Dragon Cavern and if you've seen the unboxing you'll know there's a pretty heavy uh, game to carry around and it's quite a big box. So to actually save some time I've actually already laid out the battlefield which is this large hex sheet and um, just to let you know that uh, this is 100 by 130 centimeters. So if you're looking to get this, you will need a big table. In this instance, it does drape over the side slightly and um, some things won't be in shot, but please be aware that for certain missions, such as the one I've set up here, which is the base mission, everything does fit on the board as per a number of other missions as well. So this is a game which is a sequel, as if you've seen the unboxing, to Memoir 44. It's a Command and Colors series of games by the guy who invented it, Richard Borg. And it's a game whereby in this space warfare, you are looking to basically take out your opponent and ultimately get more victory points than them because in this first victory battle, it's the first 13 points. I'm gonna to talk to you basically about how these uh, base movement things work, let you know actually what I think about the game, what I like, what I dislike, and also whether or not this is for you, especially if you like Memoir 44, or if you never really heard about this game, but are familiar with Memoir 44, which is a top 100 ranked board game on Board Game Geek, and other things such as you know why you might want to get this game. So in terms of getting these victory points, just to let you know, each of these different units have victory points associated with them. They're always the same, you don't unhide them. So in this instance, it's worth one. We have a destroyer down here, and that, if you flip it over, is worth three. I will talk to you a little bit about the differences to memoir as well. So you firstly lay out the cloth, which I think, to be honest, I could have done. It doesn't take long to set up. You then need to look out to where these certain positions need to go, and that is based on the certain setup given in this 40 page rulebook. In this instance, we're talking about the space history, we're talking about the opening salvo, and easy truce. So ultimately, we've gone into this distant galaxy, and we found another ship. And we're thinking, like, oh, well, why are they here? And just to let you know, there's no actual um, overlap with the Command and Conquer game, Red Alert. So, like in Memoir, this is a game of battling, you will be needing dice, and what you're looking to do is ultimately get close enough within range to attack. So something to bear in mind for these base missions, you don't have to worry about what's called a task card, which I'll talk about briefly. But first and foremost, let's get straight into, let's give an example of a game in a turn. You're gonna start off with five command cards each, you're gonna start off with four uh, star tokens each and two combat cards. So as you can see, there's some over there. We're playing this kind of green faction and they're playing the red faction. We're playing the Confederation, they're playing the Commonwealth. As you can see, quite similar things. Again, if you're aware of, say, Memoir 44, you'll be very familiar with these kind of like winged parts of the factions. And you're gonna pick a card. Now, the person who goes first, the person who plays the fewest units, which takes care of uh, potential first player advantage. So let's just say I want to play uh, this one here, order one order to three units in the central sector. So reveal at the same time, if this A is lower than what they have, we'll be going first. So the central section is anywhere in the center, including any overlap on these dotted lines. And we can basically move forward, uh, each of them can move forward uh, and actioned. So in this instance, let's start off with say the fighter. Now you can see here, basically that is its movement. So how far it can actually go. In this instance, it can go four. Very nice to have the iconography, which I'll come back on to. So we could go one, two, three, four, way over there, which to be honest, isn't necessarily a bad thing, but the thing is, it's then further out of range. Because of its range, it can get one hex away by rolling three dice or one um, roll of the die and being only two hexes away. So in this instance, it's gonna go one, two, and just stop there, and it could battle. So in this instance, it's gonna take one die and it's gonna be fighting this particular ship here, which they're different, obviously, things what it is, and uh, I'll come on to why and what these things are in a moment. They're saying it's a cruiser, saying this one's defined as a cruiser. You're then gonna pick up the relevant die, and actually, I do know what it is. It is uh, our big beast, it is the flagship. Flagship start off with eight, and it's always worth eight victory points, and it starts off with three small fighters. The reason I've laid it out as I have is actually this has been a game in progress. So I thought it was very interesting to actually show you actually what we're doing and where we chose to go and where we chose to sort of flank and attack each other. In this instance, what you're trying to do to try and get those eight victory points, remember that's over halfway to getting 13, you're trying to get rid of these fighters first. So if you want to fight this thing here, 
you need to be getting this battle die, a purple or a yellow. Yellow is basically a wild card, it's a star, and we need to try to get a purple, a flagship. We did it. In this instance, uh, we are one away, so we could have rolled two extra dice, which is enough. But in this instance, let's just say you rolled one, and it took rid of that flagship. Now that flagship normally is worth one victory point, but because it's part of this larger cluster, it doesn't work like that. So that's the first thing done. We have two more things we can do. We've got a destroyer that can move two, and then it's going to be rolling, as it's two away from that flagship, two dice. So let's roll there again. You've got nothing. And this one can move two, and this always goes behind it, so you can always know what it is, and people be aware of it. To be honest, you don't even need these figurines. You can leave it as it is, but um, I've come to realise that it is quite nice, especially with the different heights, potentially, as well. So then we're going to battle with this. It's... Uh, well, as you can see, it's two away, so it's going to be rolling three dice. One, two, three. And it doesn't hit it. We also get some red alerts. Basically, these are sort of critical failures that have happened to uh, the ship. And basically, as, a, as an overview, it's going to be typically moving backwards two hexes or an additional two for each additional one. There are some things whereby that isn't necessarily applicable. And that's whereby you'll see to, you'll get used to this over time, going into exactly what it is. So dealing with a battleship. So if we look down here, we have a battleship here. When it's adjacent to a command vessel, ignore one red alert. So various things it can actually do to avoid um, taking any sort of damage and stuff like this. You can also use these star tokens to do various things. One thing, for example, you could do is spend two of them to move an extra hex when you do movement. Or you could spend one of them to basically counter out one of those red alerts. So let's say it's countered one, but there's still two remaining. It's then going to move backwards two spaces. Typically, when you do actually have two red alerts, you cannot do that, just bear in mind. I'm just going to talk to you now about um, how you can attack. Can you hide behind asteroids? Yes, you can. So unlike a memoir, whereby there's basically forests, and they basically reduce the amount of distance you can roll, you can hide behind them, and something such as here can't get you, or here, but here it potentially could. So you can shoot you know, side by side, but you've got to be aware that you've got to maybe maneuver around these asteroid fields as well. And if you happen to you know, destroy uh, one of your capital ships, they do turn into debris, which again can act as an additional hindrance. So that's the key thing you're gonna be playing. And then at the end of your turn, you're then going to draw up uh, either one of these cards. So another one, which in this instance would be more on the right-hand side, or you can you'll get an extra star token as well. So that's what your turn is going to be. Or you can draw up two star tokens. So it's up to you. Do you want to start you know, bolstering what you have or maybe increasing your movement? That's ultimately what you're looking for. So the key things to that game, and again, you're continuing until at least somebody hits 13 points at least, and then the game is over completely. So the rule book um, isn't too clear in some areas. Let me talk about some of my, my views on this. For example, it does show you about the different kind of ships. The thing is, what's good and bad, you have different colors, but they've made them very different. For example, these guys are kind of the same size, so you could envisage them being the same kind of thing, but it's not very clear um, when in the rule book you're only seeing one type. In this instance, when you're going, you know, how am I assembling my ships? It's only showing one example. I think it should show both, because it's a lot clearer to see that way. Um, the map, this is way too big. Um, it's good and bad. So obviously you need a big table to play this out, especially for some of the later missions. Because again, it's, it comes with eight missions you can play and there's lots of variety coming on. But additionally to that, in a way I do prefer it to memoir. What I like about it is it feels spacious, literally like space, because it is just so wide ranging, even flowing off the edge of the table. So it's, it's up to you. I mean, it feels slightly constrained in memoir. And even though I like the theme of memoir, you know, it's, it's a real world event. Happily, it's nice to know that this isn't to a degree and it's a lot more free form and you don't have to think about doing something that you might not have happened in real life. So that's quite nice as well. So it really depends on what your take on it is. Um, having all these stands put on, I mean, there's 92 of these put together, which does take quite some time. A couple of them did snap off, uh, but aside from that, they're generally quite sturdy. I mean, they come off, as you see, quite easily, but they didn't come off during play, which is great. And they slide across very nicely as well. You don't need the bases. In fact, in a way, let's just take off this fighter base. If you just leave it like that, in a way, that feels more like it's floating in space than this does, because it feels like that is pointed in space. So I don't think you need it. 
Additionally, let me show you the box. I mean, all this, as you can see, one bit fell off. Those are all created. As you see, we're not using all those in this particular game, but that used up a lot of space when you still need to put, you know, roll up the the battle uh, mass as well. So I don't know whether or not they should stay erected. I have a feeling they shouldn't. And you know, that takes up a lot of space. So you have to be aware of that. And I didn't want to remove uh, that div the, the, the divider. So aside from that, again, it's uh, positive and negatives are relating to that. And you can get loads of extra expansions, which do look quite nice. You can get the Dreadnought and stuff like that to ignore some red alerts. So these are various things you can pick up and buy and add onto it for like a 10 or 15 pounds look quite nice and that I think can all fit in that same box and um, aside from that again there are bags you can put them in there now when I did actually take uh, various things which is the poles out of the bags um, those are perfect for actually putting in these tokens once you finish with them so you have one for each player now, I haven't talked to you about task cards so what these let you do is at the start of the game from mission three onwards you can actually upgrade certain things certain things you can say well I'm going to start this particular battle very much more asymmetrically than what's already been provided. So it really makes that game a lot more creative and different from what those standard eight games are that are in there. Even though, of course, things are differently arranged each time, but it's something to be aware of. You also have combat cards. You can use these once per turn to do something like light speed. These happen to be the same cards. I know there are more different ones like warp speed, which moves up to three hexes, say. Play this card when ordering a unit. The ordered unit may move at light speed. Up to five hexes, units may not combat this turn. So you can do that. And uh, so there's some things in it which, again, are memoir-y like. There's some definite things which I feel are not like memoir. Some things which I think are better, knowing that you could be attacking and then having to retreat and being aware of that and making sure you've got a decent stockpile of stars. It's a nice thing to work towards. There are other later missions which are like memoir to a degree. So obviously, if you've got something going well, keep doing it. Um, I mean, aside from that, you know, I've covered off quite a lot there. If they have any other questions, though, please check out that uh, that description, obviously, um, in YouTube, by all means. Also, check out the comments in YouTube as well. I do reply very quickly. If you have any other questions, please let me know. And if you're looking for further videos, if you haven't already, please subscribe. And of course, I'll be letting you know um, what obviously I think of our future games. I think it does work quite well, like I said, well, this map. Hit that thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video as well. And again, any other questions, please let me know. Well, this has been Red Alert. Red Alert, so there's lovely space uh, craft and warfare going on. Again, any other questions, I look forward to speaking to you very soon. Bye for now.